Hello there and welcome to Level Update. Lake Mead and Lake Powell are the two largest reservoirs in the United States, and together they form the backbone of the Colorado River storage system. Both lakes are vital for water supply, hydroelectric power, and regional stability. Monitoring their water levels gives us a direct view into how the river system is performing and what challenges lie ahead. Let's dive into the most recent numbers and trends for each lake. Starting with Lake Powell, as of October 1, 2025, Lake Powell's water elevation is at 3,544.63 feet. This places the lake about 155.37 feet below its full pool of 3,700 feet. By content, Lake Powell is currently sitting at just 27.73% of capacity, which translates to around 2.19 trillion gallons of water in storage. The depth at the dam is about 412.63 feet, far from the lake's full potential. Looking at inflows, for the start of the new water year 2026, the total inflow is around 12,673 acre-feet, which is about 73% of the October 1st average of 17,352 acre-feet. On the other hand, the Glen Canyon Dam has released 16,258 acre-feet, meaning that outflows have already exceeded inflows by 3,585 acre-feet. This imbalance has resulted in a net storage loss of nearly 3,887 acre-feet in just the beginning of the water year. Over the past 12 months, Lake Powell has dropped 33.38 feet compared to last year. The trend line shows a gradual decline through the winter, a small rebound during late spring and early summer when snowmelt contributed, followed by a continued decrease through the end of September. The seasonal cycle is clear, but the overall yearly trend remains downward. Now let's turn to Lake Mead. As of October 2, 2025, Lake Mead's water elevation is measured at 1,057.58 feet. This is 171.42 feet below the lake's full pool, of 1,229 feet. In terms of storage, that translates to just a fraction of its design capacity. While Lake Maid is higher than its lowest historical marks, the lake has seen a long-term decline with the shoreline receding dramatically over the years. Comparing the two reservoirs side by side helps us understand the broader situation. Lake Powell is currently lower in percentage capacity than Lake Mead, sitting at 27.7%, while Lake Mead is holding slightly more water by proportion but still well below desired levels. Together these lakes represent the majority of the Colorado River storage system, and when both are at such reduced levels, it highlights the tight margins of water management. Lake Mead's decline over the past year has been significant as well. While its daily fluctuations are smaller, the year-to-year -year picture shows a consistent loss of elevation. Both lakes have been working together through coordinated releases, with Lake Powell sending water downstream to Lake Mead through Glen Canyon Dam operations. However, when Powell is already struggling with reduced inflows, its ability to support Mead is limited. The inflow situation above Powell also matters. The 34 tracked reservoirs that feed into Lake Powell are collectively at 68.44% of capacity. While that sounds healthier than Powell itself, it is still far from ideal. These upstream systems need to provide consistent water to maintain Powell's elevation, which in turn stabilizes Lake Mead downstream. For rivers feeding into Powell, current flows are at about 71.72% of the October average, a shortfall that directly impacts the lake's ability to recover. This reduced inflow means less water is available for storage, and with outflows continuing to meet downstream demands, Powell finds itself in a tighter balance. When focusing strictly on water levels, both lakes have lost significant elevation compared to just one year ago. Lake Powell is down 33.38 feet year-over-year, year, and Mead is more than 170 feet below full pool. These numbers show how much capacity has been lost over time, 
The combined effect is a reduced cushion for storage, less flexibility for water management, and tighter operating ranges for both Glen Canyon Dam and Hoover Dam. One of the striking features of Powell's chart over the past 12 months is the seasonal rise in June and July. This corresponds to snowmelt inflows, but the rise was modest and quickly reversed by late summer. By September, Powell's decline accelerated, bringing it back near yearly lows. Mead's fluctuations are less sharp, but follow a similar overall downward trajectory. The connection between the two lakes is critical. Water released from Lake Powell into the Colorado River eventually flows into Lake Mead, which means that the ability of Mead to maintain or gain elevation depends directly on Powell's releases, in addition to any local inflows. With Powell already in deficit, its support to Mead remains limited, and that shows up clearly in Mead's flat or falling levels. Looking forward into the new water year, the early imbalance of inflows versus outflows at Powell suggests that both reservoirs will continue facing pressure. Even though snowpack is measured at nearly 150% of average, the actual precipitation feeding into rivers is only around 12% of average. This mismatch indicates that runoff efficiency may not be enough to offset outflows in the near term. In conclusion, the water levels at Lake Mead and Lake Powell remain at historically low elevations. Powell sits at 3,544 feet and is down more than 33 feet from last year, while Mead holds at 1,057 feet, far below full pool. The inflow and outflow data show that both lakes are releasing more than they are receiving, which contributes to ongoing declines in storage. Monitoring these numbers in the months ahead will be critical for understanding whether the system can stabilize or whether further declines are inevitable. That wraps up our update on Lake Mead and Lake Powell water levels. Powell is now sitting more than 155 feet below full pool, and Mead is over 170 feet down, with both reservoirs continuing to show long-term declines. These numbers matter because they directly affect water supply, power generation, and the entire flow of the Colorado River system. If you want to stay up to date on these critical water level changes, make sure to subscribe, drop a like, and check back for future updates. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next report.